Hey guys, what's up? Jessica Cabasi here. In today's video, I want to share with you guys some of my tips on how to make money using your photography. As a photographer, you can have the best work possible, but if you don't know how to market yourself and you don't know the business aspect to photography, you're really not gonna get that far. You're not gonna be able to get clients, get new clients, and then keep booking jobs and then making money. So I'm gonna share with you guys, again, all my tips and how I kind of started. So first things first. You do need to start shooting. Now, a lot of you guys tell me that, you know, oh, I'm from a city that doesn't have a modeling agency or there's not a lot of models here. I don't know, I don't have anybody to shoot. So definitely this is a big issue for a lot of us. Most of us don't live in cities that have major modeling agencies or professional models, but that should not be an excuse to not go out and shoot. So whether you're shooting, you know, your cat or maybe your brother, your sister, a close friend, Maybe you're even shooting some buildings in your city. I mean, go out there and shoot and practice anytime that you can because you do need to build a portfolio. If you don't have a portfolio, you don't have a good set of pictures to show somebody, you're not really gonna have anything in your arsenal to get even more people to work with you. So you just have to start out by shooting something. Find somebody that would look good for a portrait standing in and just take pictures of them. They don't have to be a professional model. And I've shown this in a lot of videos that you don't need professional models to get a good picture. You can take a friend or even a stranger and transform them into a model. So the way I wrote this down is shooting goes to portfolio and that goes towards your marketing, that goes towards your social media, that goes towards your clients, that goes towards bookings, and then that goes towards making money. So I think this all intertwines together. I'm gonna be going over this. So I wrote down that, you know, it's not enough to just be a good photographer. You do have to have a business strategy. You can't just take good pictures and then you just expect for people to email you and just start making money. That's not how it works. I wish it, <laughs> I wish it were. That would have gave me a lot of extra free time. <laughs> you must market yourself well. This is where social media comes into play. This is where a good website is going to come into play. You need these things. There are some photographers I met who literally don't have a website. And okay, maybe that's gonna get you however far, but you at the end of the day, you, you need a website because there will be one or two clients who will ask you, do you have a website? And when you say no, it's just going to put that doubt in their mind. Why does this person not have a website? And again, there might be photographers who are like, oh, well, you don't really need a website. I have Instagram, I have this, you know, they've seen my work. Okay, but some people want to see a website. Some people out there do equate a really well-made website to a good, trustworthy photographer. Use social media to your benefit. If you're a photographer who isn't crazy about Instagram, well, you know what? Guess what? I don't think any of us really are crazy about posting 15 times a day, but we got to do it. So if this is something that you can use to your advantage to book clients and make some money, then why not use it? And also, I've had clients who have told me that they booked me off of one picture that they saw on my Instagram. How many of you guys have been in the situation where you get told about a photographer or even a florist or a makeup artist? What's the first thing you ask that person? Oh, what's their Instagram? So definitely does play a huge role in how we market and how we make business today. Another thing that I wrote down that I personally don't use, but I've heard from other photographers that it does work, using wedding vendor websites and maybe you can sign up and register to be a vendor so that if a bride is looking on a certain website and she's looking for recommended photographers you could be one of those people on the list that you know is searchable and the brides can look at your work through the vendor website so definitely that is just another option for you guys personally i've never done this i've never really felt the need to but i mean sometimes it does help Another great way to expand your clientele is when you do work with a client, you tag them in your social media, and then if they end up posting your picture to their social media, they end up tagging you or crediting you. So that just creates more buzz. People will start asking like, oh, who took that picture? And they'll see the credit or the tag. One thing I will caution you guys though, and I've heard, you know, I've talked to so many people about this, is when you know the photographer kind of almost harasses the client to post a picture or credit them or tag them. I would advise against this. People may disagree with me. Some people will be like, no, the client has to tag me. The client has to add my credit in there. 
but I think it's creating a really bad vibe or a bad atmosphere where you feel like you're forced to do something and a lot of people just don't like that. So for me at least, if I have a client that I've worked with, I've done their wedding, I've done a portrait for them, I give them the pictures and you do whatever you wanna do. I don't tell them to do anything. I don't tell them, oh, you need to tag me or you need to credit me because Honestly, 99.9% .9 of the time, they do it without me asking. And I think that is actually more rewarding. And you actually want someone who wants to tag and credit you because they're really happy with their pictures rather than, okay, well, Jessica harassed me for five minutes and she's making me add this tag. So you definitely don't want to you know, push them into a corner and say, you need to tag me. You didn't tag me in these pictures. Again, it just varies from photographer to photographer. I've heard of photographers that have it in their contract that you have to credit them and you have to tag them. Um, I just leave it up to my clients and kind of let them do their own thing and word of mouth gets around fast. So if people have a good experience with you, they definitely share that with their friends and other people. So never underestimate word of mouth. People will remember a good photo, but they will remember a really good experience more or a really bad experience. So word of mouth definitely counts. When you are booking clients, when you get an inquiry from somebody, definitely have a professional PDF ready. I'm gonna show you guys my PDF and how it's laid out. I've never actually shown this before, but I do wanna help you guys and give you an idea of how I run my business and how I really show my clients my packages. So the PDF is horizontal and it's three pages long. The first page is a full picture of one of my favorite weddings. I usually do this to kind of catch the client's eye so they can kind of visualize and think like, okay, how would I look if this were me? Like this could be me in a photo shoot. So that's kind of the, the thought behind having the first page just be a, an eye-catching picture. Second page are my packages all spread out and I try to keep them super organized. I give each one a name. I say what's in them and then at the very end is the price for each package. I also have my logo as well. Third page is just any extra information that I want to add. So any extra charges, things about the deposit and all of that stuff. So definitely extremely helpful to have an organized PDF that looks professional, has your logo on it that you can just send out anytime. You can update it for any reason and then just send out a new updated version if you want to hire your prices or change anything. And I think that is where my graphic design skills really came into play with that PDF. I designed everything and I love typography so it was fun for me to make. When you do meet with clients, be prepared with full sets to show them. Some clients want to see the whole wedding. Some clients only want to see couple sessions. Some, some people just want to see dress pictures. So be ready and prepared to sh be able to show them pretty much anything they want to see. And if they ask for a certain shot and you don't have it, just be honest with them. Maybe you can kind of approach it like, okay, well, I don't have this shot just yet, but can I show you this instead? One thing you absolutely do not want to do is to pressure your client into booking with you. You don't want to, you know, make up like, oh, I have another booking here maybe, so I really need to know if you, you want to book me this day or yeah, you know, this is a limited time offer. You know, this, this, this discount is only good for blah, blah, blah. This, People just don't like that. So don't pressure someone into booking a photo shoot. And photo shoots are a lot of money, so people just don't wanna be spending it and not feeling 100% confident about it. Another big thing, which I think a lot of people are making a big mistake on, is not taking a deposit. So if you are booking with a client, the day that you guys meet and sign a contract, which by the way, you also should have, you should never book a client without a contract. In the contract, you should state that a deposit is due. Whether that deposit is $50, $100, or like me, I do half of the total package price, you should have a deposit in your contract in which the client pays right then and there as they sign it. If you are booking someone without a contract, without a deposit, then you're just going on trust and <laughs> Okay, if someone is really booking you 100%, they don't mind putting down a deposit or signing a contract. Um, a lot of the time, it's almost expected as a professional for you to have those things. So, you know, contracts are really important and they're gonna really outline guidelines and what you expect from the client and what the client is gonna expect from you. So 1000% would recommend I would not even do business with somebody or even a job without having a contract in place because really that's the only thing you have in writing that guarantees anything. 
and that includes money. So if you want to start making money 100% and not losing gigs and everything because you booked somebody that didn't show up, have a contract and take a deposit. For me, I wrote my own contract and then I had a lawyer look it over to make sure it was legally sound. So I definitely would recommend that. Having a lawyer look over this contract will not only protect you, but will protect your business. So you definitely want someone with a legal background to be checking this contract and making sure there are no cracks or there are any, you know, things that won't hold up in court. God forbid if you end up there because of something like this, which you, it might happen. So you just want to avoid all of that. You know, keep things really simple when it comes to your photography packages and what you offer to your clients. People get overwhelmed very easily. They're not familiar with photo sizes and different magazine cover prints and books and video stuff. Give them the ability to add things on. I think they will appreciate the fact that they can customize their package. So I really hope my tips were helpful for you guys. I've been doing photography for quite a while, almost eight years now. I've shot everything from baby pictures, senior pictures, family pictures, engagements, weddings. It kind of shocks people when I tell them that I've been paid on time for every single event that I've done. Every single event. I've taken a deposit and I've had them sign a contract. So I think just the biggest thing is making sure that you are paid, a contract is signed, and that you are paid on time. <laughs> Why did that just rhyme? Oh my God, I rhymed again. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Being paid is important, but being paid on time is even more important. So again, you just wanna start it off professionally. I think you will appreciate it. Your clients will appreciate it. It'll be an easy process for both parties. So I wish you guys the best of luck, and I hope that you apply one or two things. I hope something was, you know, helpful for you guys in this video. So leave all your comments and thoughts below and thank you guys so much for watching.